Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Zerk Monster Four. Uh, so, anyways, this is a terrible introduction. I have no idea how to start videos. Okay, so Fire Emblem Four. Now, I figured. Uh, I'd sooner or later have to do a video on it, uh, mostly because I, it's considered the best in the series by a lot of people, and for very good reason, like, uh, I understand a lot of people really like this game, and I can totally see why a lot of people really like this game, I'm just not one of those people, uh, uh, you'll learn why in a second, but, okay, so, Fire Emblem 4 is, a it's an interesting game for me, uh, Firstly, uh, the story. A lot of people really like the story. Uh, I think the story's great. Uh, there's a lot of real subtlety here. And uh, a lot of the themes and just how it works. And like especially the end of uh, a certain chapter where a certain barbecue happens. And some guy spits a hot mixtape. Uh, Fuck you! I hate all of you! You know what I mean, but... Uh, <laughs> There, there's a lot of moments in the story where it really feels grand, and I think, like, of all the games in the series, uh, Fire Emblem 4 and Radiant Dawn nail uh, scope and war the best. So, it's it's probably uh, objectively one of the best written stories in the series, uh, if not the best. Uh, but, um, I have a lot of problems with it, uh, mainly because uh, one of the big things about it is it's heavily based uh, on the Vosslunga saga and basically the entire uh, first generation of FE4 uh, is a retelling of Vosslunga uh, and uh, it, as someone who read Vosslunga uh, a while back before he played the game and is very familiar with the story uh, it was kind of disappointing because I feel like I already knew what was going to happen at the end of it and that would be eventually that Sigurd would die, uh, and then Fafnir would get revived, and blah, 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 blah. You know, that that kind of thing, if you've read Voslunga. Uh, or, sorry, not Fafnir himself, but his legacy and his followers, and, you know. Uh, but, really, uh, like, it, it just wasn't, the story didn't grip me in the same way a lot of people did. Uh, similarly with Arvis, like, I know a lot of people really like Arvis and say he's a really good villain, and he is a really good villain, he's got this uh, really cool presence to him, he's, like, really imposing, and, like, of the designs and genealogy of the Holy War, and, like, in terms of the art, which is super dated and looks a lot like first stage initial D, uh, I'll put up his picture on screen comparing the two, because I think it's honestly a really funny comparison that they look uh, so much similar, uh, but... Uh, anyways, uh, of, like, of the art in genealogy, I think Travant, uh, and Arvis, uh, their designs hold up, uh, the best. Uh, yeah, uh, but Arvis is, Arvis is a really cool villain. Uh, my, my issues with him is that we don't see as much of him as I would have liked to, and uh, it feels like a lot of his personality and a lot of his story is hidden behind the lore. Like, I'm glad that it's part of the main game and it's there for you to s discover if you want to see it, but uh, you don't really get uh, the similar sense of, like, who Arvis is just by, like, experiencing the main story. Like, he's still a in very intimidating and threatening villain, like, on the levels on par with, like, the Black Knight or Nurgle, uh, but he's, he's, he's a very good villain, but I wouldn't, I, I would hesitate to say that He's the best in the series. I think Lion, just in terms of writing and characterization, and what Lion represents as a villain, and like the fact that he, he his writing is so consistent on both pathways, even though his character uh, between Erica's and Ephraim's path is so vastly different, but his writing feels so consistent, and like he's still the same guy, just on different sides of a spectrum. Uh, but... I think Lion is just overall better written than Arvis, but Arvis is certainly a very good villain and probably my third favorite in the series after Lion and Zephyl. Uh, Lion, uh, but, uh, excuse me, Arvis is a great villain. Um, now, the story is good. Uh, first and second generation. First didn't surprise me much. Second was alright. 
Uh, the villains are the villains are great. Travant and Arvis are awesome. Uh, I guess Manfroy is okay as well. Uh, the the child mechanic in genealogy I think is probably the best in the series, uh, just because of uh, how skill inheritance and holy blood worked in genealogy, and like the various holy blood weapons and stuff like that. Like it's it's I think it's probably the the best and most strategic that the children mechanic has gotten. And what I really like about it versus the children mechanic in Fates and Awakening is because genealogy is split into two separate stories, one with the main one with the first generation cast and one with the second generation cast, is if you fuck up with doing uh, a pairing in first generation, like you do a terrible pairing and you don't pass on the right skill or uh, you're just new to the game and you don't get the optimum holy blood uh, passed down to create like a monster unit in the child run, you're stuck with that unit. You're stuck with that mistake of terrible breeding. Uh, whereas in like Fates and Awakening, if you don't pass on the right skills, you can reclass or uh, just not use that unit because you still have the parent character. But I think what I really like about Genealogy's mechanic is you're stuck with the units that you end up with, like uh, that you end up uh, creating through your pairings. Uh, and you're stuck with them, and I think that's a really cool idea. And uh, it, it, it adds a lot of strategy to the game that isn't coming from the maps. And let's talk about the maps, actually. They're giant, and I hate them. Okay, I, I'm just going to say that. Uh, there are some interesting ideas in there. Uh, the fact that you have your own castle to defend, uh, as well as an enemy castle that you have to capture, that's cool. I like that. And, like, a map like that in moderation, or if it's only, like, two or three maps between the whole game of, like, 30 maps, like, that'd be okay. But the fact that it's every map in the game, and every map can take up to two to three hours to complete... It's a blessing that there's only, like, ten chapters. And, yeah. But, man, is... Those maps are a pain. Armor Knights are useless. So you basically have to rely on your on your flyers and your mounted units. It's just... It's super annoying in that regard. Uh, like, basically, if you aren't on a horse in Genealogy, you're pretty much... Yeah, you're, you're low tier. Uh, because the maps are just that big. I mean, they're well-designed maps, and there's, they're just big, and I don't like that. Um, yeah. But other than that, yeah, the game, the child mechanics are great. Uh, the story's great. I don't want to talk too much about the story, because I think it really is a great story, and I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't played it yet because it's really interesting very game of thrones uh if you like that kind of stuff you'll really like genealogy uh, at least for the story anyways um the gameplay uh it's really hit or miss it's not really like the maps are giant and they take way too long to compete like i i, I just i just can't stand that and as a result uh genealogy i think for me is it the best fire emblem game I'm not really the person to tell you that, because uh, Genealogy doesn't play like how I think the best Fire Emblem game would. Like, uh, it, you could argue that the Theresia 776 was the first Fire Emblem game that was structured in the modern way that was used uh, from uh, 5 till now. Uh, like, 5, 6, and 7, Conquest, Path of Radiance, all kind of use the same structure uh, in terms of how, how the progression is. Uh, so I feel like uh, whenever I get around to playing Thrasia, I'll probably enjoy that a lot more just because it's more of what I'm used to and my computer just updated. Um, and uh, I just feel like uh, just the, the structure of genealogy is what holds it back for me from being uh, as good of a game as people say it is. Uh, I mean, if you still like genealogy, uh, just go ahead. Like, I understand why you would like it. Uh, I understand people... Uh, like, there are a lot of good characters in there, too, like, uh, 
I like I really liked uh, Levin and uh, Sigurd and Selif uh, were pretty good. Arvis, of course, as I mentioned, most of the villains were all really great. Uh, Eldigan uh, and his son as well were also really good. Leaf was pretty cool, but I I don't want to make an opinion on him until I play uh, Thrasia. Um, but yeah, a lot of the characters are really good. Uh, the art is a little dated, but as an initial D fan. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me as much as it might bother uh, some other people. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just not my kind of game, and it suffers from something I like to call Super Paper Mario Syndrome. And basically what Super Paper Mario Syndrome is, is uh, when you think of, like, Super Paper Mario, that game has, uh, like, it's got a really good story, weirdly, for a Mario game uh, that's, like, actually super dark and super nuanced. But, like... In order to experience that story, you have to go through some really asinine gameplay. Like, Super Paper Mario, I'm sorry, is a pretty badly designed game with a great story. Uh, like, like it's, it's, yeah, it's just RPG platformer doesn't really work. Uh, it, it's, it's a bad design game with a good story. And that, that's, that's similarly what I think of Genealogy. It's a game with, uh some really cool ideas for game design and some of those really work like the child mechanic and the two stories just like in super paper mario the 2d to 3d flipping is really interesting and can be r really well executed at some points but it's but a lot of the other parts of the gameplay are really hit or miss uh uh frick um yeah it's and even though there seemingly is a lot of replayability, again, like in Super Paper Mario, there's a ton of branching paths, like a ton of NPC interactions you could do, like a lot of things encouraging you to play the game over and over and see everything that there is to see. Uh, there is that in Genealogy too, the children mechanic especially, but I don't feel like I can really bring myself to play through Genealogy a second time. And really, that's the deal breaker for me and why I can't really do a full review on it. Because I like to play through games uh, more than once uh, before I make a review on them. Uh, like, I don't really like to uh, formulate an opinion on a game until I play through it at least twice. Which is why I haven't reviewed uh, Echoes yet. Because I've only ran through it one time and I, I need to do a second playthrough to really formulate my like a proper opinion on it into the point where I can like actually recommend it. Um, that's why I've reviewed like only awakening, uh, sacred stones and fire emblem seven. Cause those are the only games that I'm familiar enough with to do a full review on. Uh, I mean, yeah, I still need to review fates, but I've only played birthright and revelations once each, but I've played conquest, uh, at least six times. And, it's the same with genealogy. I, I can't really see myself playing genealogy again. And as such, I don't think I can do a review on it in that respect. Uh, I might watch a Let's Play in the future uh, just to get another taste of the story. Because I do really like the story of genealogy. I just... Uh, experiencing the story and playing the game are two very different things for me. And uh, I playing the game is just not as fun uh so those are my opinions on genealogy uh it's a good game with a good story but it's not for everyone and i'm one of those people who it's not for uh again if you like genealogy and think it's the best in the series i will completely respect that opinion because it is a fantastic game it just doesn't appeal to my taste anyways that'll do it for me my name is zerk monster hunter 4 I will see you in the next video, and no matter what games you like to play, happy hunting.